Camaro certainly isn't the same vehicle that debuted in 1967. It's faster, safer, and much more technologically advanced. But Camaro hasn't strayed from its 34-year heritage as the American rear-wheel drive muscle car. Whether you drive in competitive events or just around town, you'll see the Corvette is designed to give you the best possible driving experience. Hey everybody, I've got such a cool video for you today because behind me are two late 1990s Chevrolet performance cars, the C5 Corvette and the Camaro Z28, and we're gonna find out which one is a better performer for the money. Now to determine which one of these is best, we are gonna start off by doing a quarter mile drag race. After that, we are going to do a rolling race and then a braking test, and that should tell us which one of these really is best. All right, Brendan, so tell me about the Camaro. What year is it? What are you packing under the hood? So this is a 98 Camaro Z28 packing the 5.7 liter LS1 engine. And I think they said that it put out about 305 horsepower, but my guess is that was a little underrated. Now, I also am running an LS1 engine in this 99 Corvette. So one year apart, same generation of car though. But this vehicle is rated at right around 345 horsepower. But here, uh, let me let me rev up this Corvette. Let's 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 see what we're dealing with. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude, that sounds great. Now, apart from some modified exhausts here, both these cars are bone stock and they're both automatic transmissions. So I assume we both launch them the same. Let's just go foot to the floor when case goes three, two, one, go. Are you good with that? That sounds fair to me. All right, case, I think I'm ready to, to go hunting some Camaros in the Corvette. Sounds good, Tommy. What about you, Brendan? You feeling racy? I'm feeling ready to go. All right. Well, let's do it. Come on, Corvette. You will not be beaten by a Z28. Three, two, one, go! Here we go, full throttle. Oh, the Camaro and the Corvette are neck and neck off the line. Oh, I got him on the line. What the heck? He's actually winning. Oh, we're close. Man, that was so close. I could see your nose hairs from over here. What did you run in the corner? I did a 15.61 at 94 miles an hour. I did a 15.46 at 98. So I did gap you a little bit toward the end of the quarter, but that was unbelievably close, dude. That was crazy. I think this is a bit, a bit more of a bargain. Yeah, I mean, typically a Camaro Z28 will run you several thousand dollars less than an equivalent Corvette of the same era. Um, although it depends, that's a specifically nice one. Now, miles-wise, I'm at 40-some thousand miles. How many miles are you sitting at? Yeah, this one's a bit more. This one's sitting at about 95,000 miles. Still pretty low for the year, but more than you. All right, now we're going to roll right into a, a rolling race here from 30 miles an hour. We're going to leave them in drive, and we're going to see which one, uh, which one will take it. Sounds good. This may not look like it, but this is one of the rarest cars ever because this is an Acura RSX Type S in bone stock condition. And the best part is if you want to own this exact car, it's up for auction right now at tflbids.com. There can't be many of these like this left in the world. 
and for all of you saying, oh, my C5 Corvette or my Camaro will run a 12 in the quarter mile, that may be so, but we are up here at a mile above sea level. We live in Colorado. That's where this airstrip is. So that's a significant impact on the performance. That's why we're seeing these times, but uh, it's a GPS verified performance tester. So now we're going to roll right into the quarter mile. So we're going to accelerate up to 30 miles an hour. And then Brendan, I'm going to go three, two, one, go. We're going to leave both cars in drive and we're just going to plant it. Yeah, it sounds good to me. I think it'll be interesting to see the difference. Are you in drive? Are you ready? Ready to go. All right, let's start rolling. Okay, bring your nose up to mine. Okay, we're good. In three, two, one, go. Took a while for the Corvette to kick down, but same with the Camaro. This isn't even close on this one. And that's where we see that horsepower difference. So the light weight and the horsepower really has a big impact once you get the car rolling and across the line then on the roll test. So yeah, you can see a fairly large gap there. The Corvette definitely downshifted yeah, quicker. Difference on that one. Yeah, this transmission I think did kick in quite a bit quicker than that uh, Camaro transmission. But um, uh, yeah, good race, good race nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. I think that really is the, the difference. Your transmission, just for whatever reason, kicked into that lower gear faster than mine did. That's why you uh, you won that pretty handily. Brendan, so now we're going to run a braking test from 60 miles an hour. Now we are both running fairly high performance tires. You're running a Firestone, I'm running a Goodyear. But uh, we're going to accelerate up to 60 and then hit the brakes as hard as we can as we uh, get to the cones. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't have a ton of confidence considering how easily you beat me in that last one. I don't know if I'm going to beat you in this braking test. Well, this is where the weight advantage is really going to come into play with this Corvette, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, you want to match my speed? We'll go up to 60. Close. Let's go see what happened. Jeez, Tommy, seems like you're taking forever. Ah, uh, well, it's a long way, Brent. <laughs> what did she do? What's the What's the verdict? 122 feet. 122 from 60. feet. It's not yeah, terrible. I guess that's okay. I mean, we're talking a what, 30 year old GM product. It's pretty good. Yeah. Let's see how the Corvette did. Nice work, Brendan. First time operating this thing. I hope I did a decent job let's see I did 122 feet you got 107.7 right. so 15 feet or so shorter yeah you pretty handily beat me on that one <laughs> well, yeah I did I, I did beat you on that one <laughs> Now we got to talk about values. So the C5 Corvette in this current market with an automatic transmission, we bought that one for $14,000, but they're typically like mid-teens for a good one. The Camaros are kind of all over the board, all the way from like five or six thousand to twenty-five thousand dollars plus. But a good one like that car is probably ten to twelve thousand dollars. Although some valuation tools will actually tell you a nice Camaro Z28 is worth more than a nice C5 Corvette Coupe. But Brendan, which one are you taking home? Yeah, you know, I'm, I am again seeing those values all over the board. And in some instances, I'm seeing you can get as much as like a $9,000 difference between the two. And to be honest, I, you know, for the performance difference, there really isn't a whole lot. So I'd probably take the Camaro if I'm focused solely on what's going to give me the best performance for the money but I really do prefer driving that Corvette. That yeah. thing is sweet. The Corvette's definitely more sporty. It handles better, it brakes better, right? But if you have kids, you know, if you have a family, if you're looking to daily drive a car, the Camaro is by far the better choice. Absolutely, for sure. And again, best bang for the buck as far as performance goes, probably out there. If you, if you wanna spend your days at the quarter mile drag strip, kind of hard to beat the fourth gen Camaro. I mean, both are, let's be honest. Well, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. A big thank you to owner Kevin for bringing down his Camaro and we'll see you in the next video. All right, Kevin, can you hear me, dude? I can.
Sweet. Well, Kevin, I gotta ask first of all, because the lawyers made us, do you take responsibility for what happens to your car in this race? Sure do. All right, and thanks for coming down with your Camaro. So tell me, how long have you had that car? Thanks for having me. I've had it since 2008, about 14 years. And what drew you to the fourth gen Camaro? What's the, what, what was the draw? Car I wanted in high school that my parents wouldn't let me get, so <laughs> I just decided to get one, you know? That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. Notice that that Camaro was super close to the Corvette, so we wanted to run one more. Now, the only reason I can think that that car would be so close is the rear end ratio. What, what are you looking at at the rear end, rear end gearing? Uh, this this one has the uh, 323 rear end. Is that optional? Is that like a package? It's an option on this. Nice, now this car has a 273, so that would explain some of the discrepancy, but um, I think a well-driven Camaro, and this is gonna be a pretty close race, so um, are you ready to do this? Yeah, it was a close one, good race. Uh, fastest at Bandemir, it was about three years ago. I got a 14.9 at 95. Oh, sweet, okay, well we'll head back and I'll look in the records on that uh, Solo Dion and we'll figure out what the time was. But um, what's your favorite part about owning that, that Camaro? What do you love about it? Just a good cruiser, it's fun to go like on a canyon drive. Um... Throw the kids in the back, go get ice cream. It's just, uh, this is a car that won't be going anywhere, so I love it. Dude, 15 6 at 94, impressive. That's Appreciate good. that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might have been a little quicker, but it's all with his feet. <laughs> what can I say? I guess I've got a heavier foot. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> For more than three decades, Camaro has remained true to its brand identity of America's honest sports car and its heritage of performance American style.